Hi my dear students, today we will discuss about generating the 8086 system clock and reset signals using 8284 clock generator. So we will discuss about 8284 clock generator, how we can generate in the 8086 system clock and reset signal. So first we will discuss about 8284 clock generator, right? First, we go for 8284 clock generator. Right. 8284 clock generator is an IC developed by Intel to provide, remember, to provide clock frequency ready and reset signals to the 8086 and 8088 microprocessors. Right. By using 8284, we can provide, it can provide clock frequency. and ready and reset signals so by using 8284 we can get clock frequency ready signal and reset signals to which processors to the 8086 and 8088 processors to 8086 or 88 microprocessors so generally this 8284 is an 18 pin chip 8284. It is a 18-pin chip. It produces the clock signal and synchronizes with the ready and reset signals and provide it to the microprocessor. So, the, coming to the main functions, coming to the functions of uh, 8284. The first one is it provides. A stable clock, it provides a stable clock to the processor. Remember, in 8086 microprocessor, there is one pin is there, that pin is called clock, right? How we will get that clock by connecting this 8284 to the 8086, right? So, before discussing about that, first we should know about what is 8284. In that, first we are learning about the functions. In the functions, it is it provides a stable clock to the processor. Next, in case of multiprocess, multiprocessor means maximum mode. In case of multiprocess system, multiprocess system, it facilitates. It facilitates synchronization of. It facilitates synchronization of multiple clock signals so that means so multiprocessor means what we are using in maximum mode maximum mode means multiprocessor when we are using multiprocess it provides the synchronization between different clock signals and next third function is it provides resetting to the processor Resetting to the processor along with the clock signal. Along with the clock signal. Remember, these are the three functions for 8284. Remember, these are the three functions 8284. What is the first one? It provides a stable clock. In case of multiprocess, it provides a synchronization. Remember these. It provides a clock in case of multiple provides synchronization, provides a resetting to the processor along with the clock signals. Along with the clock signals. Right? So now coming to the actually this 8284. Coming to this 8284, it is composed of three sections. It is composed of three sections. One section. If you go for the logic circuit, it composed of how many sections? Three sections, right? So the first one is a reset section. The first one is a reset section, and then next one is clock section, and then a ready section. This is what logic circuit of eight to eight. Logic circuit of 
So, 8 to 8 for clock generators consist of how many sections? Three sections. First one is reset section, clock section, and ready section, right? So, we will go for logic diagram, right? C. So, by this is the logic circuit of 8 to 8 for clock generator. Now, you please see the signals OSC. This is OSC and clock and P clock, right? And these are the three outputs generated by the clock section. This is generated by the clock section. The crystal oscillator here, the crystal oscillator present in this section generates a square wave signal. It generates a square wave signal as the output when the crystal is attached between two inputs x1 and x2. When it is attached between two, x2 inputs x1 and x2. The frequency of the generated square wave, the frequency of the generated square wave signal is equal to the frequency of the signal, equal to the frequency of the crystal, remember, equals to the frequency of the crystal. Further, the square wave signal, so here we will get in the square wave signal. The square wave signal is fed to, the square wave signal, it, it is, comes the square wave signal. The square wave signal is fed to where we have to fed, fed to AND gate and, and the NOT gate, where we are fedding this AND gate signal and to the NOT gate signal, right. So, here we are putting one AND gate and another signal is we are putting to NOT gate. Simultaneously, the inverted buffer gives oscillator signal. The inverted buffer, when we are giving square wave, then it will give oscillator signal, right? Now, now coming to the next one. F by C, remember here. So, F by C is the frequency or crystal section pin, frequency or crystal section, remember, frequency or crystal section pin used to select the input of the oscillator, used to select the input of the oscillator. When its input is high, when its input is high, then the operating frequency is determined by the external frequency input EF5. EF external frequency input. By the other case, it is determined by the crystal oscillator. Right? So through AND gate, through AND gate, remember output of the oscillator, through AND gate, output of the oscillator is fed to the divided by 3 counter. Let's see. And again, through this, we are giving the divide by 3 counter, right? So, when F by C is low, when by F by C is low, by when F by F, when this, when F by C is low. So, when F by C is high, EFI, EFI is fed to the counter. EFI is fed to the counter. Timing signals are for ready and reset pins are produced by the counter. Produced by the counter. Thanks. Next, coming to the for the operation of EFI, for the operation of EFI, input synchronization between multiprocess system is necessary for which CYSNC, remember, is used, CYSNC. Whereas, when the crystal oscillator decides the operating frequency, then in the case, its signal is subject to ground. Then in case, the signal is subject to ground. So, by using the CYNC signal, it allows synchronization among multiple 8 to 8 ports. Multiple 8 to 8 ports. See, if you are using multiple processors, then we require multiple uh, uh, clock generator, 8 to 8 for clock generator. So, by using CY and C, we will provide synchronization between different 8 to 8 ports. Right? When, when you are using a single 8 to microprocessor, then it is grounded. Remember, then it is grounded. CY and C. When this will be used, synchronization clock. That means, when we are using multiple processors, then only we are using this. Right? Next, it is noted that generated output clock frequency, the generated output clock frequency in both cases will be one third of the applied input frequency. Whatever frequency we are giving, then it is one third of the applied input frequency. The clock signal for peripheral devices is generated by dividing the lock frequency by two. By dividing the lock frequency by two. So, basically the devices like 8 to 54, we are having another one, like 8 to 54 timer requires P clock. See, this is P clock. Like the need to low operating frequency. Right? Next. Next coming to the reset section. Right? So, what are the sections we are having? Reset section, clock section and ready section. Right? So, so first one is ready section, clock section. Next, reset. In reset section, 8 to 8 for is composed a smith trigger. See, this is a smith trigger. And a D flip clock. Smith trigger and D flip clock. On each negative edge of the clock signal, on each negative edge of the clock signal, the circuit applies a reset signal. So, negative clock is the when they are giving what happened. So, it provides a reset signal to the microprocessor. 
Initially, when the power is first applied, then RC circuit. See, initially when the power is applied, the RC circuit gives logic 0 as 0 input and uh, the reset input is shown in the figure. But soon the capacitor gets charged by through the resistor. So, this is about the total logic circuit of the 8 to 8 volt. Right? Please try to remember. Please try to remember. So, next class we will discuss about so, how we can interface 8284 with 8086? Until then, thank you.